You guys don't know if this is real or fake. So. Yeah, maybe, maybe this doesn't <laughs> exist. So hello everybody, uh, we're doing uh, high art. Hey, you doing? <laughs> uh, we're doing the Lens with Talk 3 today. And right. uh, we have a couple of uh, interesting topics. Uh, some of them, uh, you know, are basically more uh, light topics, but uh, I actually want to start with something with, that- With a uh, heavy topic. <laughs> with a heavy topic, yeah, literally. This is the uh, Sigma 60 to 600 lens. Mm. And this, this is a, <laughs> this is heavy and big, yeah. That's that's a really big uh, lens. Actually, we just published a review, yeah. and um, I want to say I, I'm I'm a little bit uh, like uh, I'm not sure if conflicted is the term, but uh, I'm on the fence about this lens for several reasons. On I, I mean, on the one hand. Uh, it's extremely well built. Yeah. It's uh, Sigma rugged. Has. Yeah, Sigma knows how to build lenses. It has all the the new Sigma features, basically all the the bottoms and switches and everything. Uh, it has a very good image stabilizer. I mean, it has. Uh, I don't remember if it's like seven stops or uh, we we tested it in the review. Uh, it's very good, especially I think uh, in stills when you're using it uh, in the viewfinder. Right. So to stabilize the viewfinder, that's that's where it shines. Uh, well, so with this, 600, you're gonna need that. Yeah, yeah for de <laughs> definitely. No, I mean, in 600, it will, the image, if you're hand holding it. Still uh, flat. Yeah, but you know, it's, it's, it's re relatively good, you know, uh, in comparison to other long telephone lenses that I've tried. Mm. So in this respect, it's good. The image quality is, is good. I mean, again, this is the longest, just, just for uh, uh, some background and, and general understanding, this is the longest zoom telephoto full frame lens that, on the market. Right. Uh, Sigma had a different version of the 60 to 600 for DSLR. Right. But for mirrorless, as far as I know, this is the longest zoom telephoto lenses on the market is a 10x zoom, so 60 to 600 basically. And for for that type of like range, the image quality is definitely good. On the other hand, right. and there is always on the other hand, what is it? this is heavy. This is yeah. like almost three, three kilograms. I haven't worked with this. So. Yeah, no, um, this this is this is heavy. You, yeah, it is heavy. You, you, you can feel that. Uh, so this is pretty heavy. Uh, it's long and kind of cumbersome if you open it <laughs> if you no try and open it and and you will see you know how long it extends uh again 60 to 600 it's not surprising uh it's 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 a feat uh, engineering feat that they can actually make this lens at all yeah. but uh that's that's uh that's something that i think some users are willing to to accept this uh the straight off that uh, this is going to be big and heavy. It's also pretty expensive, uh, but that's maybe also to be expected. And it's a lot of glass. It's there. a lot of glass. Now that's that's for sure. The the thing that I think is I'm the most uh, on the fence on is the autofocus. Yeah. Now I, I I wouldn't say the autofocus is fast. It's not that the autofocus is not fast. Mm. The problem with third-party lenses in general, in terms of what I have discovered, and I think yeah, I've reviewed tests, over the years yeah. over a hundred lenses, some of them first party, some of them third party. I think that the problem that third-party lenses still have, and it doesn't matter if it's Sigma, Samyang, or Tamron or other lenses, other manufacturers, mm. uh, it's, it's the accuracy. It's the accuracy and not the accuracy on stills, like still subjects, but moving subjects that's usually the the issue of course that, that's and, the test yeah and and we try is, this is that software is that because they just can't find a way to Honestly, talk I, to the camera i don't know that's that's the question um i don't have a good answer for this i've tried this with both the a1 latest mm -hmm. firmware and the a7r5 again latest firmware and I got mixed results. Mm -hmm. uh, for the most part, the hit ratio was not amazing. Mm -hmm. and I took it for, uh, we had like an air show a couple of months ago in, uh, in Tel Aviv, and I took it to shoot, there was an F-35 and some F-16s and all sorts of planes going relatively low. And this lens was actually pretty, like, I think in terms of like the, the angle, it was great because uh, some of them were really close. So 60 was great for that. And some of them were, 
well, 600 is probably too much for, for an air show yeah. like close by, but uh, 400, something like that. It, it, was, it was a good like focal range for that. But in video, for example, I tried to focus on one of the planes. It didn't focus at all. Like the focus with the the yeah, I, I don't that, remember that. which camera I used back then. It it was either the A one or the A seven R five. Both of them in the firmware have the the plane focus. No, no, just the A seven R five. So maybe maybe that, but still, I don't think that it should have happened. I I I think it was. I mean, the there's A7R5. a lot of contrast in the sky to not use that. You can just. I know it just didn't have it just didn't work and mm. that really surprised me. I tried different uh, I know like focus options on the camera and on the lens here there's a couple of like the you have uh, a focus limiter so with this I mm. tried all sorts of different things it didn't really work in video in stills it sort of worked but I had a lot of misses. Again, this can definitely be user error. But I tried it a bunch of other times uh, in mm. in different other situations. I wouldn't call. I mean, I wouldn't use it as a bird shooting lens. I think that if, if I would try and think of a scenario where you would expect to use it's this, a very specialty. Yeah, type exactly. For range. most, if you wanted a long telephoto zoom lens, I would probably go with a 150 to 600 lens. It's lighter. It's less cumbersome. It's uh, less expensive. And I think it's it actually in some respects performed better, at least in terms of like the the autofocus. Mm. So for that, you for most users, I would probably go with that. If you really need that sixty to one hundred and fifty extra reach, uh, I would think that this might be used for like I don't know, sports, like outdoor sports, because this is a slow lens, so it's it's like a bright day. Kind of lens. It's right. not, you're, it, the problem is the, and the reason why I wouldn't wasn't able. We had it for quite a few months now. Mm. The reason why I wasn't able to shoot with it more is that it's so hot lately that you, and you need to shoot with it during the <laughs> the middle of the day because you need a lot of light. That it was kind of problematic. But I would say like maybe soccer or I don't know football or something like that. That could be a good uh, like scenario for using this. Not uh, basketball unless you're shooting outdoors, mm -hmm. uh, and and even outdoors basketball is like six hundred no, millimeters is way too point. much. Yeah, football might work yeah. uh, or soccer, or whatever. Um, and I don't know what else. Maybe other sports or other like yeah. activities where you need both the long and the fairly wide. I mean, it's almost normal. Like sixty is almost normal, so. I know, but uh, as I said, I, I have mixed feelings about this lens. Uh, if you really need this sort of range, just be you know mindful of the autofocus and in, in, uh, with uh, moving subjects. If you have a different experience with this lens, uh, yeah, be interesting to hear what other people. Yeah, say. yeah, I would really like to know you know how did you uh, manage the whole uh, autofocus or moving subject thing, both in stills and in video. But probably mostly in stills. I mean, it's it's, it's a still lens, but you can shoot video with it. Yeah. So uh, so that's that's uh, the sixty to six hundred millimeter review. We are uh, going to have a fourteen millimeter uh, Sigma 14 one point four review coming up in not too distant Which future. Is about the same size, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's very it's obviously much shorter, but uh, it's kind of thick. Yeah, yeah. but it's an f 1.4 14 millimeter, so yeah. it's not it's not really surprising. Same amount of glass. Yeah. Uh, so now, now let's move on to some lighter topics. Right. Uh, and we have something which, uh, I know, it's kind of strange. I know, I, I, I even don't know where I found it. Somewhere on YouTube. About? Uh, about a new video game. Oh. <laughs> and 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 that's that's kind of strange you know it's not a, a typical subject that we cover here but this is a video game about photography yeah it's a simulator it's basically a simulator a photography yeah. simulator but it's it's actually a video game it's not like a, a simulator to i guess to like a learning tool uh, that's why i couldn't tell from the trailer yeah really. exactly that's the point What's i'm the not point? sure uh there is no a lot of information though. currently it, like the graphics, at least in the trailer. We'll put it really on the good. screen yeah. so you will know what we're talking it's about. It's like a walking game and you're like in different uh, scenarios, like nature yeah. walks and stuff like that. I think it has some culture places. Yeah. It's, it's really nice. The, the scenery is great and but the music sounds nice. I mean, it's it's like 
exactly I told Art I think before that the, the it's like exactly the opposite of a first person shooter basically <laughs> although it's a first it's a person first, it's a first person <laughs> it's shooter a yeah kind of shooter. but you don't shoot anything just yeah. take pictures so that's yeah that's that's an interesting thing it's not out yet so yeah. I don't know how much it's cost I don't know I'm not sure what the, the actual gameplay is going to be but if you're interested in that sort of thing you know it's it's coming and we'll have a link like everything on on the on below the the video and in the lens with article uh, subscribe to our channel and to the you check uh, out the website the, the, exactly stuff. there is more information over there uh, so that's that and uh, going on with this theme of like lighter uh, topics mm. uh, there is a DIY cat, cat camera project that somebody has recently did they uh, got too much time on their hands yeah <laughs> No, but it's actually kind of cool. I mean, DIY, I saw this on DIY Photography. Uh -huh. uh, shout out for them. Uh, go check out. We'll have the link to their article uh, where we found it. It's uh, basically, it's a guy who took the Insta, the new Insta 360 Go 3. Right. Uh, which All has like, tiny one. yeah, the tiny one, which has like the remote uh, uh, screen where you can actually see the what you're shooting mm. uh, remotely. So he basically created like a cat uh, holder and a camera holder. How do you call it? Yeah, it's like on a collar. A collar, think, a magnetic collar, basically. Right, I think they, they talked about how they try to harness and the cat didn't yeah, like it. Yeah, they tried anything. different things. So, um, that's why I say they get too much time on their hands. But yeah. it's a great project because they get some really interesting yeah. footage of like the cat. It's the, like a farm cat. Where the cat, cat was. Because if I, if I put that on my cat, <laughs> I would see the same. It would be, be the, the most boring thing <laughs> ever. It would be a static photo of like yeah. his, his uh, bowl of food. <laughs> I can do a time lapse of the food decreasing all the time. Uh, you you, you have bit. to give me a shot of your cat. I'll put it on the yeah. screen so people will understand what type of cat we're talking about. But yeah, it's, I'll do a time lapse of him eating <laughs> uh, and getting yeah. fatter. But this is a farm cat, and he's like climbing trees and and uh, catching rats and stuff like that. So yeah. pretty interesting footage. And uh, I think at the end of the project. video, he actually put it on the dog, and the dog went to all sorts of places. And they had a dog camera thing. Some years back, I remember. Yeah, I'm not sure if it was it's like new, a, but yeah. No, I mean, this is th this camera is great. Yeah. And the, the form factor is tiny. If you can put it on a scrawny cat, you, I mean, you can put it on anything. Like, it's great for cooking videos. It's great for any We kind have of plans, stuff. actually. We have uh, plans to get it and use it in, in either a review or some behind-the-scenes right. shots. We'll, it will be here. But years ago, I saw a specialty pet camera mm. where you could actually talk to the pet through it like it's it's wi-fi or bluetooth connected or whatever so you can actually you can you open up an app and and you talk to the cat or to the dog whatever cats don't care about <laughs> leave me alone or, but the dog like you can fit you could like actually fetch uh it had it, it was a whole ecosystem where um there's like a a, a ball thing an electronic ball that you can make you can activate Anyway, it was weird. I'm not a, I don't know, but I'm not a dog person. Me neither. So yeah, we're both uh, but cat they, people. But, but they, they had, uh, uh, they had that. I was like a Kickstarter years ago. But this is a lot simpler because it's yeah. a tiny little thing. You just stick it on. That uh, that can be interesting. Okay, you can you can test it with your cat when you, when we get it. But uh, uh, it won't be it that. Wouldn't be very interesting yeah. footage. <laughs> Okay, on to something more interesting, or at least more, uh, not interesting, but more serious, I right. think. Um, this is something that the F-Stoppers recently did. They, they did a video on, um, it, it's a it's a preset, it's how would you call it? Uh, plugin? Plugin, yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it's basically a Photoshop plugin, which is also a standalone, right? Uh, I'm not sure if you're supposed to use it as a standalone. Okay. I only tried the trial version, okay. so I'm not... Yeah, uh, I don't know what the full version uh, works like. It's called like. Retouch uh, Four or For Me. Uh, I'm not Retouch sure. That's the, me, yeah, yeah so. that's the website, and it's basically a Photoshop, as you said, plugin, uh, which has different plugins, and you can choose either get all of them or. Uh, <laughs> that would be an <laughs> yeah, expensive purchase to get that, all. Of. That's the main thing, <laughs> you know. The, each one they have like. Uh, Eight or ten, I don't know. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. something like that. Uh, a number, a whole number of uh, different uh, effects. How, how would you call them? Uh, um, each 
each plugin, or I guess one plugin, but each uh, action tool, 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 tool is yeah. is for a specific person, yeah. a purpose, a specific purpose to clean yeah, the skin. Yeah, they have to heal. Clean. They have clean background. They have smooth fabric. These are the ones that I found like interesting. A, yeah, like a whitened teeth one. Okay. You can do it easily in Photoshop nowadays and in other tools. I, I wouldn't, you know, pay any any money. At for first, that. I was looking at. It, I'm like, going, why? Because yeah. they've had these actions for years and years. Yeah. But it was more. They claim that it's like the highest quality and all this, which is great. Uh, that's fine. The only thing that I read through the, uh, the their website a few times, I finally caught on why it makes sense. At a hundred dollars each, around this, like, you're paying to hundred. Yeah, like ninety dollars for the white, uh, whiten the brighten the smile. Yeah, uh, plugin tool for the plugin. Like okay, the only thing is it has batch renders, right? Mm -hmm. So you have a thousand, you took a, you're working with a model and you shot a thousand photos, right? Yeah. And you're not going to go one by one and obviously do that. So and, there's yeah. the specific things that you need to change, like, you know, the problem skin, smile, teeth, whatever, right? Or the background. Yeah. You, you click, 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 and you batch render the whole thing. That makes sense. That makes a yeah. lot of sense. Is it worth, you know, three, four hundred dollars? It depends when on what you do, I think. It depends. Exactly. It's a very specific. If you're a professional photographer who retouches or retoucher that, that does exactly this sort of like portrait work right. day in and day out, and this is what you earn money from, it will save you a lot of time. I think so. It, it's worth it. It makes sense. Yeah. If you're, if you're taking on, you're a retoucher and you're taking on a bunch of different projects from different photographers and then you can cut that work, that base uh, uh, work, that, work. Yeah, yeah. Of, of course you gotta go still photo by photo and, and, and clean up other yeah. things and, and whatever but if you can have those photos ready for you at a, to you know a few steps in yeah I think it makes sense one other thing that I found on their website that's uh, that I thought was really interesting is they have a video plugin and what does it do it does the same things what? Seriously? Which, I don't know. It's not out yet. It's oh, like, okay. sign up and we'll have it ready for you. But with all the AI stuff now, I think it, it makes it sense. It's be interesting. It's, so well, maybe also, it will, yeah. it's not it's nothing new. They've had those things around for, for some time now. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Um, Adobe had plugins for... Their own plugins? You, no. Like, like, did you buy? Or you, yeah, you could just buy a separate... Um, I, I think that. it was... I forget what it's called. I used this some years ago. Okay. Uh, maybe but, like six, eight years ago. Oh, okay. But it wasn't great. Oh. I mean, you could, you could, if if you, it's a close up shot and there's problem skin, you could smooth it out, out a little things bit. like that. The effects weren't amazing. But if you could use AI to figure out where the skin is, not the eyes, not the hair, you know, map it out, clean it up, and, and do that for, you know, yeah, you don't have to video, go frame by sure, frame. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense, yeah. but we're still not we're, there. Yeah, we're, we're not there. Okay, maybe we'll talk to them and see if uh, we can actually test it and see how it goes and if it's actually worth the, mm -hmm. the money. Uh, and talking about AI, by the way, we have we have quite a few AI related topics. Oh, there's even more and more. Everything. There is more and more. Yeah, for sure. One thing that before we go to the AI uh, second thing. One thing that I would really want them to add, and or Adobe, but you know, Adobe, if you're listening, this is something mm -hmm. that is really needed, uh, is dust cleaning uh, AI sort of thing. Because there is dust and scratches sort of thing in Photoshop. It's not ver working very well. Mm -hmm. You know, I still do it manually if I really want to. And there is always, I mean, we're shooting a lot of products and it's, it's, it's not good. So if there will be a good AI that does that and doesn't destroy the image quality, then that will be amazing. Yeah. But uh, so far, if you know of anything like that, hit us in the comments. Video too. There's dust on the sensor. You should video and then get that out. There's blood. Yeah. There's, there's, and eventually there's actually oh, there already is. effects that like, like native effects that, that do that. They work. Uh, they, they work sort of depending on the kind of movement in the shot. Yeah. yeah. 
But I was not talking about this. I was talking about dust on, let's say, I'm shooting yeah, this uh, actually, lens. I was talking about like... That's pretty complicated. No, I, I wasn't yeah. talking about video. No, I was talking about stills. No, of course. In, in yeah. stills, I I think I think we're not that far. In video, yeah, it's definitely. probably going to take some time. Yeah. Uh, okay, so talking about AI, uh, there is... Th- this is like a general thing that I want to talk about. There, There is a new software. I think it's basically software from on one on one uh, is a software company that does all sorts of like editing uh, mm. uh, things so they released this uh, AI image tagging uh, sort of um, software and organization tool yeah now I don't think that this is anything completely new I mean y- you had like uh, organization uh, it's not it it wasn't called AI it was called like basically like uh, uh, basically you, you have like a, a whole list of uh, of stills basically of, of images a database of images and uh, the software or the service most of it I think way back in like uh, what was this I don't remember which service it was but it, it's it's nothing new basically it goes over your images and divides them into like topics so mm-hmm. like it can, it can show you like if you have kids so this is like john and this is like mary and this is like whatnot and you obviously give them names that one of the problems i think is always the the issue with um, privacy you know mm. people have issues so i i'm not sure if you really want to do it in the cloud i would probably prefer it if it was done locally yeah like uh, the software that you download yeah and and a lot of the nas the the servers that uh, you buy these days have dedicated apps basically on the NAS itself for doing exactly this, for basically, uh, mm. uh, so, so you can find images more quickly. Now, this specific software is like AI-based tagging. So it tags your images and then you can search by those tags and, and it has a lot of tags. So that's, I think that this is actually pretty useful because if yeah. you have like a database of 100,000 images, I mean, if they are really well organized, that's good. But if you're looking just for images of a specific person, then you know uh, there is no way that you can do all the the cross cuts, yeah, yeah, cross reference and cuts. And, and I mean, I want uh, this guy with a bright sky or whatever. I mean, it, it's yeah, that gets that's get complicated. So mm-hmm. in theory, it can be really cool. But I've I've recently got a new QNAP uh, ser- uh, server, uh, mm-hmm. QNAP um, NAS, uh, which should have this uh, feature. So I'll try it, and maybe in, in a future lens with talk, we'll discuss this and see how how well it works. I didn't try the on one. Is uh, that only for software. stills or videos? As well, I'm guessing uh, it's guess, stills. No, it will be amazing to have something be- for video. <laughs> That would be a lot of processing. Yeah. yeah, but think about it. If you can search a video for its content, at least like partially, it yeah. would be amazing. You know, be it would be great. It would be a good, a very good time saver. But I, I'm not sure that we are there yet. Maybe, again, if you know of any tool that does this well, mm-hmm. hit us in the comments. Uh, so continuing with this uh, AI trend, um, there is a new video from uh, Motion Array. We use uh, Motion Array a lot, especially for audio. Uh, they have good audio, but for like plugins a little bit, I don't know for what you use it uh, for. Uh, the yeah, they actually added the um, Photos Talk recently. I haven't used it. I just saw it's there. Yeah. yeah, I usually just for music. For music, yeah. yeah. But I, I use it for, for like well, templates little, and uh, stuff. Template, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they have all sorts of stuff. Mm-hmm. So they have educational videos. So one of them was really interesting that they posted recently. I put it, I put the link below and put some part of it on the screen. Uh, what they did is, is kind of simple but nice. I mean, the guy there basically recorded himself on a sort of a white background or wall, uh, which was kind of boring. And then using uh, Photoshop, uh, the new Adobe Beta, Beta, and Beta yeah. Photoshop, uh, he basically added all sorts of things into the frame. Yeah. But it looked realistic. It didn't look like it was, uh, I don't know how you want to call it, uh, like just it's not a set it looks like it's in the frame yeah it looked it looked realistic obviously it wouldn't work 
I mean, you will have to play True. with it, but yeah. it worked well. It has to be a static image. You can have yeah, some yeah. Work it has limitations. Sure, it won't work. Make on sure everything. that you don't when you move around, you don't your mask doesn't go. Again. Exactly, exactly. So it, it's not you know it, it's not. I think uh, it's a great idea. I think. Yeah. Uh, Especially like, if you're doing that. like a talking head sort of right. video and you have like a boring background, like a flat background, you can add some stuff like plants and stuff, you know, in post and right. it can work. Add some lights, add some contrast. I think it's a, like if you don't have a set where yeah. you shoot, all yeah. you have is a light and like a background. Yeah. That's a great, uh, like you can make it look really nice instead of. But Actually, you need to in, think about, as you said, you need to think about it in advance to have enough like dead, uh, like uh, dead space or, you know. Well, not really, actually, nope. because if you can shoot Why? only, you can shoot a close up like, like this, mm -hmm. right? And then you photo, I mean, obviously your body won't be. Ah, uh, you can expand the video? You can expand, you can, it's not a video, you, ex you can expand the no, pixels and put that into the video. Which is really great because it doesn't mess up your resolution. You can yeah, still true. shoot pretty close, like as long as you're not cutting your body but off. But the better like, currently does have some limitations in in terms of what they what it creates. But this these, these no, will, that's just a matter. This of, will uh, will yeah. change soon. I'm guessing. I'm just saying, like for a specific for a creator that's just starting out, they don't have. Uh, the budget, the budget to, to, for like complex yeah, uh, background. You can stuff. do something really simple and make it look really good. Yeah, which no, is I agree. great. Which is really great. We should try it sometime. So yeah. you know, maybe maybe for a future video, we'll, we will switch all of this Actually, for something else. You guys don't know if this is real or fake. So. Yeah, maybe, maybe this doesn't exist. Yeah. <laughs> We're not in the studio, really. Yeah. So so that's uh, that's for uh, the AI background uh, video. Yeah. And now I'll do some actual like gear and stuff. Uh, I think two weeks ago, Lawa, it's Venus Optics, uh, mm -hmm. the, the name of the company, but most of people know the, the Lawa. brand uh, Lawa. Um, they introduced basically it's not it's not lenses. It's um, I don't know how to call it. Mm -hmm. It's an extension tubes, basically microscope it's, tubes. Microscope yeah. tubes, exactly. Uh, and it's a set of them. Like, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's uh, four different ones. Uh, 10 to 50 X. So basically it's, right. uh, it's um, 50 X ju just so you have some reference. And a regular macro lens is basically one X uh, or one so to one, one to one. So it and shows you the, the, the same object, the same size, the size, as, size as, as yeah. real life on the sensor. Right. A, a super macro lens is usually what most people think about is between one to two and one to or two to one, excuse me, right. two to one and uh, five to one. So this is like super macro and microscope lenses, you know, this in this case is between 10 to 50, 10 to 50 or um, maybe yeah. more, but uh, th that uh, that is what it is. And I've been working in the past. Uh, I've done a review on the Nanoa. It was a five uh, five to one lens. I have to say, for people who never did like super macro uh, photography, that's complicated. Like it's 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 tricky. It's yeah. tricky. It's tricky. The the um, focus plane is like super super tiny. Even at f like 20, 30, 40, whatever you want, it's still super super tiny. You need a lot of light because yeah. you're shooting it at, at a very close right. uh, close aperture, and if you want to shoot anything moving, like a, 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 I don't know, an insect or anything, mm -hmm. even the tiniest tiniest movement will like be out of focus. And if you're thinking about these microscope lens, I'm thinking it's always you know uh, yeah, focus kinda. stacking. You know, there I don't think that you can do anything other than focus stacking. Because on their website photos, they have an actually the photo the camera is set up as a microscope. Like oh, it's, okay. It's top down. Okay. It's on a stand. So yeah, if you're using it for on a flat like fully flat surface, maybe you don't need focus stacking. Mm -hmm. But for anything else, you know, it's like yeah, uh, handheld. I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> no, forget good, about it. Good luck. No, I know people who are doing like super mac or like um, like um, I don't know, two to one, even five to one handheld. I don't know how they do it. You know, I I've tried it. Everything on it. Even if you move like the slightest wind. 
Like even if you if you move the the table, you bang on the table, it will move. Everything moves. It's like mm. exaggerated to the max, and and this is just five to one. Mm. So fifty to one. I know it's like, it's it's very complicated, but it's interesting. Again, I don't think that this is like a first in on the market or anything, but it's just. No, uh, but I mean they they do. They have other also, specialty lenses. Yeah, right? this exactly. is very. Very kind of niche type yeah, thing. Exactly. I don't. I mean, at fifty, I don't know if you can. What, what are you doing? Microbes? What, what are you shooting? <laughs> uh, very small things. Yeah, very tiny but things. yeah, that's that's that. Uh, Westcott has something interesting. This is like a really simple, really inexpensive grip. Basically, yeah. it's called the uh, Westcott Pro Grip Two. So it's a it's a handheld thing. Uh, and it's designed to take either a flash or uh, a stroke, basically. Right. Uh, you put it on the on this grip thing. Is it cold shoe for the for the speed light or or a quarter inch for a uh, thumb, thumb screw to, to yeah. connect the? Uh, Obviously, I mean, larger will work with. I'm trying to think will work with like, I don't know, like a big like a Godox light. It would. I I'd somehow. Ha- I would hate to hold up a whole four hundred uh, yeah. with a soft box yeah, over my head. That's but, for sure. Yeah. And, and like in the video, they have this and girl, uh, girl assistant running around with right. this thing. Yeah. I, I don't think that. Would no, be but good. I, I have to say that no, it's a good in, in our last shoot, uh, we did a shoot here in the studio of. Uh, it was a model. It was just portrait shoot, and we had to try the the like the light from different angles. Mm. It's much better than actually moving the light stand. So it can be useful and, and it's not very expensive. So I the mean, one thing I, I, it, I think it'd be it great. It has an umbrella holder. It has an umbrella holder. It, that's a good, like the accessory is, is thought through. Yeah. But I think what they need to add to the bottom of that is a baby pin connector because yeah. Like you limit yourself. All right. Yeah. yeah you, you're carrying that around, but how I do you set it down? I guess that it needs to be like a baby pin, on, a possibility to connect the baby pin on the top and the bottom because on the top you can put, I mean, most like larger flashes have yeah, baby pin connectors. That would connectors. make it more versatile because yeah. just carrying that around, like w- where do you set it down? Okay. You can, you can like, with the with the, the, you, fa- you, the you face of the softball. You can use like a, a tabletop tripod sort of things, I guess. With a soft box on it, that's pretty limited. Yeah. So you kind of have to have a stand, right? So you pop it on and that's it. Yeah. That's the only thing I, I thought uh, yeah. they, they were missing. Other than that, it's it's pretty useful accessory. Yeah. And uh, almost the last thing that we have is the, how do they pronounce the name? Flexion, do you think? The FX Lion? Uh, uh, yeah, actually, FX Lion is how they oh, say okay. it. Uh, so they have a new nano wireless V-mount batteries. So the, the question is, what's the wireless and this yeah. uh, setup is doing? So That's, that was my question. Like, wireless what? I'm thinking, maybe I'm wrong, that it's like uh, it, it. you have like uh, control, not control, but like uh, you can monitor the battery status from an app. No, actually, it's a lot simpler than that. It's what? wireless charging. You can actually put oh, your phone yeah, onto yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Onto right, the battery right. and, and charge it wirelessly, which... But did okay. we see like a different manufacturer that did have this f- functionality where you can uh, monitor different uh, V-mount batteries from an app? I think I've, seen, I, I've seen that somewhere. But in, in this case, you're, you're saying it's basically like wireless charging for it's a phone? It's a regular... I don't know if it's regular. I mean, it's probably yeah. like streamlined. I mean, V mount batteries are still like the technology is still evolving. Yeah. Somehow, I mean, it's pretty limited to, to photography. how much how much more can you add to a battery, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's all it is is um, they have what, three different. Uh, I, I think they have three different versions, right? Uh, I don't remember. We'll put it on the screen. But fifty, uh, one ninety, and one fifty. Yeah, this like is usually what you get. With and these. you can just pop your phone on top of it and, and then uh, charge it. And, charge and it. it has, I think, USB A, C, and uh, D tap. Of course. Yeah. Several of those probably. Again, we'll have it on the screen. So yeah, that's that's uh, an interesting innovation. And the final thing is actually again a small a small battery related thing. It's it's basically a Tilta L series battery plate, yeah. and we like we, we have seen yeah we have seen kind of a few of those running around. It's, it's not obviously the first one in in uh, in the industry, but this one is kind of nice. I think it has like relatively fast charging 
both in and out. So right, you can you you can pop a an an L, L, L type battery in there and use that to to power your bat your, uh, your your camera. It ha it's an action on cage type uh, yeah. mount, right? So it's yeah. a, it's it's got locating pins. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's uh, you important. just you connect it to your cage and then you run the you power the the camera through it. But it's a it's a really small device. Yeah, with a small L type battery, you can just have that and use that as a power bank. Yeah, uh, and you can charge the battery. That, that's can... that's the part I liked that you can actually charge the battery when it's up. And it's a fast charger, exactly. like 18, wa 18 watts or something. Right. So that's that's pretty cool. So, it's not very expensive, so right. you know that's uh, that's so a small accessory. You can use that like in a pinch. You can use that as a power bank for your yeah. computer, for your phone, whatever. And it's on. Keep that on the cage and yeah. power your camera. The, the only thing I don't like, which doesn't have anything to do with Tilta, is I don't like L batteries. Uh, I don't know why I prefer V mount any day. For the They're size, more the small V. I prefer the small V mounts. Uh, I, I would like this sort of. Well, like, they're getting smaller. Like small rig had those really nice compact yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah, We we haven't tested those yet, but no. hopefully in the future. But the the um, what I would like is actually the same concept. Maybe Tilta can make one or a small rig or somebody. Uh, uh, basically, the same size, more or less, uh, plate but which will also be a charger for V-mount because V-mount chargers, even yeah, the small ones huge. are pretty big. Yeah. No, the, the big ones are obviously huge, but we have a small one from uh, uh, Hawkwoods, I right. think, which is relatively small, but still, I mean, it's it's chunky. Yeah. Uh, so if you if you can have like a, a V-mount charger plus, you know, like a plate plus whatever that is like good and in a small size and inexpensive, that will be, you know, a hit, I think. That's, that, yeah, that's where we're headed. Yeah, hopefully. Uh, so that's everything that we have for you today. Uh, again, don't forget to subscribe and uh, watch or read the, the full article on Lensvid. Go to the website, check it out. Exactly. And uh, we'll see you in the next week with Lensvid Talk. Bye. Bye.